Good morning and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles and this morning we're visiting with Dr. Steve Higgins. He's with the University of Kentucky and is the Director of Animal and Environmental Compliance. But one of the most important things for all of our livestock is water. Yes. And so we put in a lot of automatic waterers, but you've done some studies to maybe say that that's not the direction we need to go. Automatic waters, by and large, are not designed for an animal to drink out of it. It's just ergonomically incorrect. So there, we actually have standards for drinking water uh, as far as the, uh, the space that an animal needs. So as an example, when we're feeding concentrates, we will give an animal two linear feet of space at a portable trough. And we will buy as many portable troughs as we need to give them those animals two linear feet. Well, that is also when an animal needs to drink. It needs two linear feet at the trough to drink. Trough. So normal, most uh, automatic waters have a ball in it that's nine and a quarter inches. Nine and a quarter inches is not two feet and will never be it. So that limits the space for one animal to drink. The other rule is, is that you should be watering at a minimum 10% of your herd at one time. So if you have 20 head that, and 10% of that is two, each animal needs two linear feet. So you need to provide a trough that's four linear feet long for a herd size of 20. An automatic water does not do that. And also the angle of the head in order for an animal to get a drink has to be at 90 degrees. An animal doesn't want to drink with its nostrils or its head at 90 degrees. It wants to drink at 55 to 65 degree angle. You cannot get to that with an automatic water. So an automatic water is good for wintertime applications in which we might have freezing in the state of Kentucky maybe five days out of the year. So we are not adjusting for the water space for animals through the other 360. So an open trough does that. However, open troughs are susceptible to freezing and producers apparently don't want to bust ice. However, in addition, when you ask them how many times they clean their automatic waters, they don't clean their waters either. So if they don't want to clean their waters and they don't want to bust ice, then I'm going to try to come up with automation or techniques in order to uh, allow automation to take place so that the producer can do something else, but the animals actually get in its water. So we've been working on systems up at the Eden Chill Farm in Owenton, Kentucky to basically demonstrate some of these alternative water systems for providing water to livestock because it is a uh, fundamental requirement. I mean, you cannot live without water, but it's a neglected nutrient because we're not providing it the way animals want to drink it. And, you know, we've put in a lot of automatic waters. So we to have. get producers to maybe switch yes. and do something else might take some time yes. to do that. And are there approved cost shares for trough style waters? So yes and no. And it all depends. I mean, there's like the, you know, like you'll go through the Division of Conservation or the NRCS for some of these programs if you want to get cost share for those programs. And so a lot of that operates at, at, at the state level. However, we have counties that operate on their own. So sometimes the information from the state level doesn't get to the county level. So yes, there's, there's opportunities that they can see as far as uh, other alternatives. We're trying to get tires accepted. NRCS will accept tires. Back in the day, it had to be a new tire, but that was a mistake. So it depends on which county office you're dealing with. But I would hold fast on providing animals a trough because that is what they want to drink out of. Even over the tire water, I know you've done a The tire water you. is a trough. Um, in, a, in a way, and, I, and I'm actually, I mean, I've been doing tire waters for about 10 years, but you know, then I have a lot of people that have trouble finding the tires. Uh, if you try to cut out the sidewall, it's extremely heavy, hundreds of pounds. And so I'm trying to come up with some other alternatives for water and animals. But at the end of the day, it's just an open vat of water with a float. I mean, and you want to call that automatic? I mean, that's all it is at the end of the day. And so a producer just needs to keep that clean. The other problem with automatic waters is, is there's not a visual inspection of the water quality. You can't see it right. and you never do. And again, this also leads to not cleaning it. There's probably what, six bolts that you have to remove to clean it. It's a necessary job, but it's a job that's not getting done and it needs to get done because these animals at whatever stage of growth you're talking about are affected by water consumption. And then when we get into these heat indexes of 105, their water consumption goes up significantly and uh, they need to have clean water. If it's not clean, they're gonna refuse to drink it or they're not gonna drink as much. And if they don't drink as much, they're not eating, they're not gaining their immune deficiency. Uh, you know, it's just, it's causing problems all the way around and it's just water. 
Yeah, and a lot of times it's problems that we can't exactly put our finger on maybe why that's happening. And we appreciate you watching the Farm and Home Show. Thanks for watching and have a great day.